All right, all right, all right. This is your host, Neil Aubrey Teller, back with another live TikTok video. Good morning, everyone. As your brothers and sisters are coming into the live chat room, welcome. If you guys are first time subscribers to the channel, welcome. If you're reoccurring subscribers, it's not your first time, welcome back. Give me a second. Ah, gonna need that. You guys have not seen my previous live, Right Hand of God. I suggest you guys watch that video after this video for you to understand the whole understanding of right hand and left hand of God. Last week, we talked about the right hand of God. This week, we're talking about the left hand of God. All right. So if you guys have not seen that video, the right hand of God, we did that video last week. We did that live last week. You guys can watch that video in the archives at YouTube at Neil Aubrey Teller. So go to YouTube, Neil Aubrey Teller. The same as my TikTok name. You guys subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed to that platform yet. And go watch the right hand of God so that you can understand what the left hand of God represents. We talked about the right hand of God. So we're going to get into the left hand of God. Right? Um, <clears throat> this is going to be controversial. Because a lot of people may know about the right hand, but nobody doesn't hear about the left hand. And how could you have full understanding of God if you don't understand the right and the left hand? See my hands? Right, left, left, right. So, without further ado, let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father God, for using me as the vessel to get this message through to the body of Christ. Thank you, Father God, for joining me in the chat room and helping me speak this message of truth to the body of Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing those individuals who need to hear this message to receive this message in spirit and truth. Thank you, Father God, for putting the words in my mouth to speak to the congregation, the things that you want them to know about the left hand of God and also understanding both how the left hand and the right hand coordinate and work together in the body of Christ. We decree and declare this message received by faith in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God, for covering all of us in the blood of Jesus from any errors that my flesh will make in this video. We ask you, Father God, we thank everyone for being participating and you know, being active in the chat room. We thank you, Father God, for the moderators that will enter into the chat room. Thank you, Father God, for those people who are not saved to give their lives to Christ to you today by the end of this video. In Jesus' name, amen. Put an amen in the chat room, brothers and sisters, if you have received the prayer and assignment. If there's any moderators in the chat room, I need you to put a one in the chat room, all right? Put a one in the chat room. You receive this one, this um, prayer and assignment. Put an amen. We're going to go to Isaiah 45, verse 7. This is a very misunderstood verse. So we're going to start off with a bang. Isaiah 45 verse 7. What does Isaiah 45 verse 7 says? It says, I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Let's read that one more time. Because so a lot of you guys don't understand the nature of God. We just talked about the right hand last week. So we're going to talk about the left hand. I form the light and create darkness. A lot of you guys, from an atheist mindset, from a carnal mindset, you guys will say, oh, God is evil. Where did it say God is evil? Right? Because it says, I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. But God said he's good. Did he not say I'm good? He says there's no evil in me. Now, we got to understand what evil is because we understand what good is. Remember, we ate from the what? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God warned us not to eat from that tree. Now, ask yourself an honest question. A lot of you guys will try to blame God for allowing that tree to be in the garden. But also, God has warned you about that tree in the garden. He says, of every tree you may what? Freely eat. But do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because in the day that you eat thereof, you will what? Surely die. So let's have an understanding of what good and evil is. If God say he's good, just, and holy, then what's the opposite of good, just, and holy? 
unholiness, unrighteousness. Uh, the opposite of evil is good, right? So evil is just an opposition. I know that we are trained to look at things from a black and white perspective. You think that you're a good person and you don't think you don't have no evil side to you. But the left side of God is not about being evil or good, right? The left side of God is just the other side that you don't understand. It's, mis it's merely misunderstood. So when he says, I form the light, when he says, I form the light, because he is the light. He says, I am the light. In me, there's no darkness. So if there's, in, if there's no darkness in God, in order for you to understand God, he has to create something that's the opposite of who he is. What will be the opposite of who God is? The darkness. So what is what is darkness? Right? So we could get a better understanding of what darkness is. Darkness is an absence of light. Right? So when God told Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of good and evil, it's saying, hey, if you eat from this tree called the knowledge of good and evil, you will know another side that you're not ready for or you will know something that will cause you to be disconnected from me so if evil is the absence of good when adam and eve ate from the tree of knowledge good and evil they had god absence from their presence because look at when adam and eve ate from the tree of the knowledge good and evil they were afraid of god they were saying oh i was naked so i hid myself he said who told you you was naked did i did you eat from the tree which i commanded you not to eat from so what would a good parent do to their children? A good parent would tell their kids not to run across the street, look both ways, uh, make sure you, you hold your hands on the rails, um, don't put your hand on the stove, you're going to get burnt. So what God was trying to set Adam and Eve know, like, yo, all of this, this is all of you guys, this is your inheritance, right? This garden, all of this earth, right? But this, you got to leave that alone. This don't belong to you, so don't touch that, right? Because it belongs to who? Satan. We know that the knowledge of good and evil is a tree that's planted by Satan. We talked about this in previous videos, but just to tie this all in, God allowed a tree of knowledge of good and evil to be there in the garden as a test for Adam and Eve to see if they will truly obey God. Put a one in the chat if you guys understand the assignment. Why would God allow something harmful to be in the midst of Adam and Eve if he didn't have a good purpose for, for it being there? Just like, okay, he creates light, he forms the light and creates darkness. Why? Because the absence of God is darkness. So the other side is what would it be like without God? See, what God was preventing Adam and Eve from experiencing a life without God. Right now, what we experiencing in this world right now, we're experiencing what it feels like to be without God's presence. We feel the absence of his presence because look at the, all the wars, the rumors of wars, the violence, the, the R word, the, the sexual immorality. God's nature is the opposite of all of that. So when you see all this stuff in this world and you say, why is God allowing us to experience all these things in this world? It's for the purpose for our edification. You ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So now you have to learn what good and evil is. I was trying to prevent you from experiencing that because being in my presence, you don't experience suffering. You don't experience death. You don't experience evil. You don't experience anything that is harmful to you. Right? But if you are disobeying me, walking away from me, guess what? You're going to get hurt. You're going to get burnt. If I told you don't put your hands on the stove and you disobey me, the opposite of, of obedience is what? Disobedience. So because you was disobedient, now you must suffer these consequences. And as a good parent... I have to allow you to go through this so that you learn next time not to put your hands on the stove. So the reason why God is allowing the evil to exist is the same reason for you to have free will and choose him out of knowing 
the difference between good, which is him, versus your understanding of what you think is good. A lot of us think we know good and we don't know nothing at all. We don't even know our left hand from our right hand. You see what I'm saying? Because you think you're God. So he said, okay, you want to play God? You think you're God? You're going to get kicked out just like how Satan got kicked out for thinking he was going to be like who? The most high. He got exalted in his heart. He's like, I will exalt myself and I will be like who? The most high. So he got kicked out because he was trying to be like someone he wasn't. So the, 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 what is the true purpose of the tree of knowledge, good and evil? To show you what the original is versus the counterfeit. You fell for the counterfeit. If God is good and there's not, there's no evil in him, your your version of good is as a counterfeit. That's why Jesus Christ said, your righteousness is what? Rags to me. God don't need your righteousness. He needs you to confess your sins and, and you, he needs you to repent and give your life to him so that you can be saved. If you think that you never did anybody wrong, if you think that you have no sin at all, can you be saved? That's why, look at how Jesus was act, operating. Let me show you the left hand and the right hand. Jesus Christ is known as the right hand of God. But when Jesus Christ came down on the earth, he didn't appear with all his glory. He appeared like a regular guy. He disappeared like a regular guy. So, to, to the Pharisees who study the law, they know the Torah, they know all the stuff in the Torah and the law. They could not recognize Jesus because of what Jesus was doing was unorthodox and it went against their customs and their norms. He's like, why are you hanging out with publicans and sinners? Why, why, are, you, why are you doing things that would consider... They would consider blasphemy, but it wasn't because he is, he is the son of God. But to them, they didn't know. So they quick to call him Beelzebub. They quick to call him a demon. They quick to say, oh, you hanging out with tax collectors and prostitutes. But look at how Jesus handled the sinners versus those who believed that they were righteous. Look how he handled, look how he handled the woman with, with the adultery. He talked about that. The, the Pharisees were trying to use the law against Jesus to see if he would stone the woman who was caught in adultery. But what did the law say? The law says, if a woman is caught in adultery, you must stone her to death. Right? That's what the law says. Go read, the, look, read, go read the, um, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Exodus. It talks about that. It says, if a woman is caught in adultery, that man and that woman must be stoned to death. That is in the law. But what Jesus was trying to teach the Pharisees and show everyone in the Gospels, you don't understand the laws of God because you don't understand the other side of God. The other side of God is the grace. See, y'all preaching the law, but y'all don't have no grace. And see, this is the opposite end. A lot of you guys only understand the grace of God, but you don't understand the what? Laws of God. So when you only understand grace, but don't understand the law, this is where you guys become what? Lawless. You following? And if you guys who, who know the law because God revealed to you the Torah, all you know is about the law, but you don't know how to share mercy. The fulfillment of the law is to love thy neighbor as yourself. But if you don't have love for yourself, how could you love your neighbor? So this is where Christ said, hey, I need you to love your neighbor as I have shown you how I loved you, right? When he showed Peter and the apostles what it's like to serve one another, he said the fulfillment of the law is in these two words. Love your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and love your neighbor as I have loved you. He didn't even say love yourself. He said, love your neighbor as I have loved you. Why? Because without love in your heart, you cannot fulfill the law. So the Pharisees who knew the law, they had head knowledge, they didn't have the heart of God. So that's why he says you were whitewashed tombs. You guys have a sense of righteousness, but your insides is what? Dead man bones. So left hand, right hand. On the left hand is the law. On the right hand is grace. And if you switch it around, 
On the left is the law and on the right is grace. You could, God could switch his hands. It's still God. It's like I showed you with a coin. Heads and tails. Whether I flip it on heads or I flip it on tails. It's still God. You need both sides for it to be for it to be a coin. So now let's understand Isaiah 45 verse 7. I form the light. That's the right hand, right? The darkness is on the what? Left hand. Let me give you a better example. Let me help you out. Let me ask you guys a question. If this it got you got two sides of the earth, east and west. You know about north and south, but those are opposite poles, right? We talk about left to right. Right? The sun rises from the east and sets on the west. Right? So if the sun is set is rising on the east, is it in the west? Put your answers in the comment section. So if the sun is rising on the east, is it night in the west? Put your answers in the comment section. I need you guys to be active today. I want to see active participants. Put your answers in the comment section. If the sun is rising on the east, is it nighttime in the West? All right. Y'all put your answers in the comment section. You say yes. Yes to what? You say yes to the darkness on the West. Anybody else? Give me a second. Anybody else? I know you got like few people in here. I need y'all to be active. You said night on the West. Thank you. Appreciate it. See? So one side of the earth is in is in light and then the other side on the earth is darkness so when he says I form the light and create darkness wherever God is focusing his attention on the other side is in darkness do you understand put a one in the chat if you guys understand that so when God revealed himself to the Israelites right because he revealed the law the statutes and commandments in the Old Testament so we look at we look at this in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, God revealed Himself to the Jews, to the Israelites, the Hebrews. He did not reveal Himself to the Gentiles. So if the the Hebrew Israelites is the right hand, the Gentiles is the left hand. I said that the sun rises on the east, and it sets in the west. Look at this revelation I'm about to reveal to you. The sun rises on the east. It rises on the Jews first. So salvation comes to the house of God, right? To the Jews, to the 12 tribes of Israel, comes to them first. Because they kept rejecting God, God starts to set in the west, giving salvation onto the Gentiles. God originally knew that he was going to give salvation to both Jews and and Gentiles. So God was shining his light on the Jews first by revealing the laws, statutes, and commandments. They couldn't keep the laws, statutes, and commandments because they needed to have their sins removed. They also needed to understand what love is. That's why it talks about love. The law, the Ten Commandments, always got to do with love. The fulfillment of the law is love. When, when Christ told his disciples, he said, if you love me, you will what? Keep my commandments. So loving God is to keep his commandments, which is what? Love your neighbor. Love those who despitefully use you. Pray for those. If you're not doing these things, you for, for you to say that you love God who you have not seen, because God is what? Spirit. How could you say you love God? If you don't love your brother, but you say, I love God, it's false because your brother is an outward expression of God. Every one of us who's made in God's image and likeness is an outward manifestation of God, right? An expressed image is that man is created in his image and likeness, male and female, he created them. So if you have a respect of person, because God is what? No respect of person. So if you have a respect of person when it comes to certain individuals who you like, you're like, oh, this is my favorite TikTok content creator. I don't really like this other dude over here. He doesn't really uh do it for me. Uh, I don't really like his video. He kind of mean over here. I like this other brother, this sister over here. That is a respect of person and you have transgressed the law. 
you should love all people, regardless if they're your, your type or not your type. So what God deals with is balance. If you keep going in one direction, he's going to give you the opposite to balance that out. So, yes, the Jews were receiving the law. So the sun or the light of God was shining on the Jews, the Hebrew nation. But when they kept living in fornication, kept worshiping other gods, sacrificing other gods, that goes against the law. So did they really have love for God if they kept breaking his laws? If he say, you love me, you what? Keep my commandments. Okay, I gave you guys a chance. Now I'm going to shine my light on the Gentiles. So now the sun shines on the west, the left side. And on the right, there's darkness. So right now, in the age of grace, you, the Gentiles is the focus. You see what I'm talking about? The Gentiles, this is the age of grace. But if you know how the sun moves, the sun goes from east to west, back and forth, in a circuit. So the Jews who rejected Jesus... They're in darkness. God is feeding them a spirit of slumber. Look at that word. It says God is feeding them a spirit of slumber. Eyes that they cannot see. Ears that they cannot hear. On to this day. Why? Because now God's agenda is focusing on the what? Gentiles. I'm not saying that Jews cannot be saved. Yet, yeah, Jews can be saved if they accept Jesus Christ as their Messiah. But if you go back to the law and thinking that, oh, I'm justified by keeping the Torah. I'm justified by keeping the Sabbath. I am justified because I'm good. You missed it. You in darkness. He gave y'all the law. He shined his light on you. He gave y'all grace. Y'all abused y'all grace. Now he's showing the Gentiles. That's why he said, I will provoke you with a nation that is not, that's not chosen. I will provoke you with a nation that is not my people. Who was the people who God chosen? It always was the Hebrews. He says salvation to the Jews first, then the Gentiles. So if you're if you're a Jew or a Hebrew Israelite and you get into your Hebrew Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite knowledge, you guys start to reject the grace. You don't know how to balance that. Y'all don't know how to balance the Torah with the grace that God is giving you. And the, and the Gentiles, because you are grafted in, you the wild olive tree that's now grafted into the body of Christ, you boast against the natural branches saying, hey, Israel and, and, and the church is separate. Israel, y'all say this in the church. Israel and the church is separate, brother. We're, we're, we're the bride of Christ. Israel, they rejected Christ, so we're, we're the chosen ones. It's like, no, you don't understand the God you serve. So let me help you understand the right hand and the left hand. God showed his mercy to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. Those Gentiles who accept Jesus Christ in faith are grafted into the natural branch, right? Because they are a wild olive branch. They were in the darkness. They didn't know nothing about God. You are not grafted in because of what you did. You are grafted in because of Jesus Christ and believing in Jesus Christ. And likewise, don't get it foolish because the sun is going to shine back on the Jews again in the tribulation. Jesus Christ is just waiting for the fullness of the Gentiles to come in. Then he's going to put his attention back on the Jews. So that's going to come in the millennial kingdom. He's going to put his attention, tribulation to the millennial kingdom He's going to put his attention on the Jews again for the thousand years because those Jews and Gentiles who accepted Jesus Christ are going to receive what? Resurrected bodies. Those Jews and Gentiles who rejected Jesus Christ, you're going to be cast into the what? Lake of fire. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 46. Now this goes into the meat of the word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For giving me to go ahead to get this done. I just want you guys to understand. So do you brothers and sisters understand the assignment? If you guys have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat room. But we go into Matthew chapter 25. Chat verses 31 
to uh, 46. So please put this in the chat room, brothers and sisters. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. And please pin that for everybody to see. Thank you. I appreciate it. Look what he says. Give me a second. It says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. This is the, the end. This is at the end. This is at the end of tribulation. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he set upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, we just talked about the right hand, and the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visit me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when shall we... When saw we a hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And right, and it says, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, as in much ye has done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have what? Done it on to me. Then he shall say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye accursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visit me not. Look what they say. And then they shall also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Right? And then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, as in much as ye did it not to the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So look at the picture behind you. That's judgment day. And what are we going to have to experience on judgment day and second coming? Right hand, left hand. So on the right, sheep on the right, goats on the left. Look at your society. I'll tell you what side you want. If you guys are always calling yourself the goat. Y'all be saying, every celebrity, yo, that's the GOAT. Yeah, that's the GOAT. Yeah, um, Drake, he's the GOAT. Um, LeBron, he's the GOAT. Your, your favorite characters, oh, they're the GOAT. Are y'all on the right side or on the left side? Put your answers in the comment section. Because that was a revelation God gave to me the other day. It's like, y'all always talking about y'all the GOATs. So, if the world is focusing on being the GOAT, Who's focusing on being the sheep? It seems like in this society, to be a sheep is a disgrace. It's a dishonor. Nobody don't want to be considered weak because look at a sheep. Can a sheep defend itself? No. But who defends the sheep? The shepherd. So you don't need to defend yourself if you a sheep because the shepherd defends you from wolves in sheep clothing. And think about it. A wolf is the opposite nature of a sheep. And look at what Jesus Christ said in um, Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So look what he says. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. He says, Take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Your Father is spirit. Your Father is in heaven. Right? Therefore, when thou does it thy alms, what is it alms? Your services, your religious services. 
right? So what I'm doing right now is a religious service. Why? Because I'm preaching the word. So when it says, take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou do it thy arms, do, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward, right? But when thou does it arms, let not thy right hand no, no, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand do it, that thy arms may be in secret, and thy father which see it in secret himself shall reward thee openly. God is spirit, right? Thank you for putting that in the chat room. He says, when you do your acts of love, service, charity, because that's what arms are, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. What does that mean? A lot of you guys come on here. There's nothing wrong with preaching to the congregants. Nothing wrong with doing what God has called you to do. You're like, okay, God called me to do this. Okay, that's cool. But you make this a, 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 a you thing versus a Jesus thing. Let me show you how you make this a you thing versus a Jesus thing. You guys put titles on your, on your name. Pastor, reverend, elder, um, prophetess, prophet this. You, why are you putting so much importance on your name? You should be putting more importance on the name of Jesus because that's the name that saved all men. You feel what I'm saying? So when you put out your titles, you are boasting about what you do. Me preaching about Christ? Yeah, I love preaching to you guys about Christ. I love Jesus, so I want the world to know I love Jesus. That's not what we're talking about, though. We ain't saying when you do your alms, don't be like the hypocrites in the street. Thinking that they be heard. You see, y'all want to be heard more than just doing the work of God. You can still do the work of God without having to put a camera in your face every single minute. You don't have to be on the street corner um, doing evangelism and have somebody recording you. Let those people who you're evangelizing to receive the message and trust that, hey, God will add the increase. God is in spirit. You can't see spirit, but God sees you. So if God sees you preaching, regardless if the rest of TikTok don't see you preaching, that doesn't make you less of a Christian or more of a Christian. Because I know a lot of you Christians have a hard time um, thinking that if I don't do this for God, I'm not a Christian. If I don't do this for um, if I don't do this for God, I don't go out here and tell people I'm a Christian. No, you got to wait till God puts it in your spirit. If you're saying God told me this, when God ain't tell you that, that's what he's talking about. Your father knows what your thoughts are. Your, your father who is in secret, who is Jesus, right? He knows what you think. He knows how you feel about him. He knows if you're ashamed of him or not. Nobody in their carnal flesh wants to praise God. Let's keep it a buck. Let's not even sugarcoat this. Many times I pass by people who are preaching about Jesus and I sometimes I feel like I'm cringing in my flesh and I have to kind of check myself because I'm like, wait a second, I'm a child of God, so why am I feeling ashamed? So if I can say that boldly here, I know a lot of you guys be faking the funk. And I preach on here every time I come on here. But you see... Your flesh is at enmity with God. It cannot be subject to the laws of God. Neither indeed can it be. So if I'm supposed to do something for God, nine times or ten times out of ten, I'm not going to want to do it. I got to have the Holy Spirit take over or I got to pray to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you know I don't want to go out there right now. I don't want to I don't want to minister right now. I just want to be in my bed. But if you want me to go in here and preach to these people today... I trust that you will put in my spirit what you want me to preach and what you want me to teach today. You got to ask God to even have the boldness to preach. So anybody that's going out there preaching, 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 is it a yes, you got the boldness of God because only God knows that? Or are you just faking the funk? Are you faking the funk? Like, you think that you going out there evangelizing, screaming at the top of your lungs, repent. Are you guys going to hell? 
That's not easy to do. You need God's grace to even do that. I have brothers that's telling me, yo, come out there and evangelize. I'm like, nope, I'm not doing that. Because if God didn't put that in my spirit to do, it doesn't make me less of a Christian or more of a Christian. I don't need to prove to God that I'm a child of God because God already knows his sheep. He says, I sheep know it, the sound of my what? Voice, a stranger they would not follow. I'm not going to listen to another Christian tell me to go out there and preach. I will listen to the Holy Spirit and he will put in my spirit when to go and preach, when to go and evangelize, when to go talk to tell somebody about Christ. Because it's not easy to talk about Christ at your workplace. It's not easy to talk about Christ to your family. Let's talk. Let's be real. So you got to understand the left hand from the right hand. When it says do not let, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, it's talking about, listen, whatever God placed in your spirit, don't be looking for some type of praise. And this goes into my next video we'll talk about later on. Social media. Right? Social media got a lot of you guys looking at TikTok content creators like they're God and they're not. This is why a lot of times when you guys come to my video, I tell you stop with all the praising. Because you're missing the point of what it means to walk with Christ. You think it's easy for me to come up here every single day and, and, and preach a gospel to people I don't know? That's not easy to do. So just be even talking to you guys right now requires faith. This, this takes me out my comfort zone. My comfort zone is to be in my bed. So this is not for praise. This is not for vain glory. People will press light regardless because people like to be a part of something. That's just, it's just human nature. You guys want to just follow whatever looks trendy. Y'all don't even got no common sense to know what's left from right and right from left. Y'all don't even discern the fruit of a person, meaning discern, discern the fruit of their spirit. When the Bible clearly tells you, said you will know them by the what? Fruits that they bear. You were quick to call me a man of God, but you do you know me though? Do you know me? You don't. You just know me saying, hey, put a one in the chat, guys. If you understand the assignment, that's all you know about me. You don't know. I don't speak like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My wife can tell you. I don't speak like that. And if I'm speaking like that at home, I'm just making jokes of that. I do not speak like TikTok if I'm not on TikTok. I keep to myself. I'm quiet. If we talk about Bible, it's between me, God, and my wife. That's it. And anybody else that want to know about God. I'm not going out there screaming at the top of my lungs. Read bad. I'm at my job like, hey, manager, everybody, you guys, you guys better uh, repent. You get kicked out your job. Let's be real. Don't try to act like you got some zealousness and some boldness for Christ when God already knows that your flesh is ashamed of him. When you see bums on the street, homeless people, you don't want to give them money. That's what you, if you want to represent Christ without having to scream at the top of your lungs, how about you start giving to the homeless? How about you start giving to the poor? How about you start, you know, giving the shirt off your back? If somebody curse you out, pray for them. You want to do that. You won't do that. If somebody cut you off in traffic, you won't let them get the pass. See, those are little things that God is watching. Those are things that God is watching. And if you perform the law in action, love your neighbor as I have loved you. Love your neighbor as I shown you. When I came on earth, I serve, learning to serve one another. If you guys always talk about, what am I getting? When am I getting blessed? When I'm getting married? Why don't you start blessing people who are already married, even if you're not married? This is just a tip for you single folks. Instead of feeling covetousness and jealousness and envy towards married couples, how come and you're like, oh, how come I can't get married yet? I've been waiting for this much long. I've been going to church. I've been praising you, God. God is like, you think works attribute to me giving you things? I'm going to say that one more time. You think that doing something for me is going to make me bless you and not bless you? This is what the Jews had and this is why they fell from grace. They think.
thing because they got the law. They thought that they were above the law. A lot of you guys, you're giving grace now. This is the grace season. You think because you got grace, I don't have to keep the law because we're saved by grace. It's, the Bible says it, brother. We're saved by grace and not of works. So why are you talking about the law, brother, when we're saved by grace? I'm like, yeah, you know one part of the Bible, but what happened to the other part? I have people coming in my comment section saying, hey, the, the books... Of the New Testament is only only applied to us Gentiles. We don't need to read the Old Testament. And I'll say, brother and sister, that is incorrect. Just because certain things in the Old Testament does not apply to the, the, to the age of grace doesn't mean you cannot apply it in your life. So to sit here and say that the only books that apply to Christians is the New Testament, you might as well get rid of the Old Testament and be lawless. Because you see, the man of lawlessness is the Antichrist. The, the man of lawlessness is going to cause you guys to fall away from your grace. Because is grace a license to sin? What did Paul warn you? The same guy y'all boasted and talking about is the same guy that's saying, hey, keep away from idols. Keep your garments unspotted from the world. Do not eat food sacrificed on the idols. Oh, wait till I come out with the idolatry video. I'm working on that too. When the Lord permits me to put that out, y'all don't really understand the God you serve. See, understanding the left hand and the right hand is important because it gives you a full balance of how to worship God in spirit and truth. You guys don't know how to follow God because all you do is follow men. You think because you're following my page, you're following God? No, you're just following the man. You don't have no relationship with God. What I'm trying to say to you is get a relationship with God. So that you don't have to be dependent on me or anybody else who's a TikTok content creator saying, God told me this and God told me that. You would know the law and you would know the word for yourself. So anybody coming with false doctrine, you would know to be like, hey, brother, that's not biblically sound. Hey, brother, I know you had a vision, but that doesn't line up with the scriptures. Right. And at the same time, you have to balance that law with grace. You're not going to just sit here and correct me or anybody else and say, hey, brother, oh, you're, you're not you're 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 not biblically sound. But you say, hey, brother, hey, sister, you're not biblically sound here. But I understand based on maybe maybe based on your testimony, where you at with God, maybe you didn't get to that level yet. So I'm going to pray and ask God to help you open up your eyes so that you can see clearly about this scripture that you're posting or you're, you're promoting on here, that's not biblically sound. So Father God, I pray for so-and-so that, you know, you will help them open their eyes, release, release them from any pride or any arrogance that they may be showing in their video. Father God, help them to uh, see the truth of the gospel, help them to understand biblical understandings when it comes to this, that, and the third. That's how you balance law with grace. You balance law with grace by giving correction. Yes, when you have a false prophet in your midst or somebody who's speaking false doctrine in your midst, yes, correct that brother. Correct that sister. But y'all don't do the other side. Y'all become just like the Pharisees, the same ones that y'all hate and despise. Y'all become just like them. And then the people who those told my grace, y'all don't want to do no correction. You see, the balance is an imbalance. So the people's all about grace. When you receive correction, oh, you can't judge me, brother. We're under grace. Only God could judge me. Okay, and you think God is not using that brother or sister to judge you? To give you corrections? Because it says God chasing those who he loves. So if you say you're a child of God, God will show you his love by correcting you when you go wrong. Yeah, you said people get offended? Absolutely. A lot of you TikTok content creators, when the light is shining on your darkness, you get offended. You're like, oh, how dare you make a stitch video about me? Hey, if you did a stitch video about that brother over there, I'm not surprised if you do a stitch video about me. I pray for you. God, do not charge it to their account. I understand. Yeah, my flesh might be offended because they made a stitch video about me, but God, 
help them to understand what they don't understand. The people who are attacking me in the comment section, telling me I'm, I'm not biblically sound, God, I know that they may not be fully grounded in their walk with you. I don't know. Only you know, Father God. Um, Whatever they're having a misunderstanding about, God, I trust and I know that your Holy Spirit will give them the understanding in due time. Right? Because it's not up to me. I could plant a seed, but God has to give you the understanding of what you just received. Just like how I'm preaching the word to you today, that doesn't mean that you guys understand what is being said. So a lot of times when you guys say amen, do you know what you amen to? Do you know what you say amen to? Do you understand that? How do understanding come? Understanding comes by applying the word, not just by being a hearer of the word. Oh man, you said a good word, brother. Anybody, a false prophet say good words. Good words that tickle your ears. See, when you preach the truth, it's not going to be sounding good to you. It's going to be offensive. So when we're preaching the truth, which we're preaching the gospel, most people, if not all people are going to get offended at some point. I'm going to keep it real. A lot of you guys are saying, amen, y'all going to get offended with my videos at some point. And that's not me trying to be jinxing it. That's just me being real with you. How many people have followed me and friends of mine and probably start stop following my videos because I said something that they could not agree with or they couldn't see past because they believe more in their seminary school. They believe more in their favorite content creators. Like, oh, you didn't say what my favorite content creator said. So because you didn't say what my favorite content creator said and it doesn't line up with what he said, then you're a false prophet, Neil. Unsubscribe. Well, hey man, you're not doing me any favors. If you unsubscribe, you're doing yourself a favor. You're doing yourself a favor. You know why you're doing yourself a favor? Because I don't need you to follow me. I need you to follow him. I don't need you to follow Neil. I need you to follow Christ. So if you unsubscribe because you found fault in me, that's fine. You learned your lesson. You actually graduated. I don't need you to be binge watching my videos. My videos are there for your edification, for your knowledge about what you don't know about the word. But once you receive that knowledge and information, that is up to you and is needed of you to apply that to your life so you don't deceive yourself thinking, oh, one save always save. Oh, we're Christians. We're saved by grace. And oh, Jesus Christ is coming back. Yes, but Jesus Christ is here right now. What do you mean, brother? Isn't he saying he's coming back in the clouds? You're looking for a visible image of God. When God comes back in the clouds, he's coming back in a visible form. But how is God here right now? God is in the midst of us. He says, when two or more come together in my name, I'm in the midst. God is what? Spirit. So if God is spirit, that means he's here right now. Where is he? He's everywhere right now. You're looking at me preaching to you, but you're getting caught up in the preaching instead of getting caught up in the teaching. Put a one in the chat if you understand the assignment now. So God is here right now. You're looking for God in the future, but God is here right now. How is he here right now? He's in all of those who believe in him. That is the church. This is what I've been preaching about in the mobile churches. The mixed multitudes. Watch those videos on YouTube at Neil Aubrey Teller. I already posted those videos. We're not going to go through that for time's sake. So let's go to my next verse. Let's go to Mark chapter 10 verses 35 to 40. Please put this in the chat room. Mark chapter 10 verses 35 to 40. Please put this in the chat room, brothers and sisters, for everybody to see. Pin this. Mark chapter 10 verses 35 to 40. Give me a second. <laughs> Mark chapter 10. Give me a second. 35 to 40. Right here. To right here. Look what he says. He says, And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, Master, we would that, that thou should do it for us whatsoever ye shall desire. And he said unto them, What ye 
that I should do for you. Right? Let me say that one more time because you know the old English. Let me read that one more time. It says, And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come on to him, saying, Master, we would that thou should it do for us whatsoever we shall desire. Right? And he said unto them, What ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on the right hand and the other on the left hand in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what you ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized of? And they said unto him, We can. See how presumptuous that is? Y'all get into the body of Christ and y'all start saying, Hey God, we will die for you. Well, let's read that one more time. What he said? Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of? And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized of. And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed. Okay, you want to talk that talk? Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. And with the baptism that I am baptized withal, ye shall be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them in whom it is prepared. Okay. James, John, on all my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Let's talk. You say you're going to lay your life down for Christ. You say you'll never deny him. You say, I'm a Jesus lover. Okay. You're going to be baptized with the same baptism that I had to go through. You're going to have to drink of the same cup that I had to drink of. He says, the world hate me. So they're going to hate you that follow me. No servant is greater than their Lord. So all those people and all you people that's constantly saying y'all Christians with titles, Reverend this. Elder this, prophet to this, deacon, reverend. Hey, you got to suffer for his name's sake in order to sit either on his right or his left. Because that's not him for him to give. That's the father. See, now we got an idea who's going to sit on his right and his left. If you go to Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, we talked about the sheep on the right side and the goats on the left. What did he say to the ones on the right? Welcome to your king. Welcome to your father's kingdom. You clothed me when I was hungry. You sheltered me when I needed shelter. You visited me in prison. You took care of me when I was sick. And then he says to the ones on the left, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. They say, where was, where were you when you were hungry? Hey, you had a respect of person. When you saw a bum on the street or a homeless person, you walk by them, didn't give them no change. When somebody tell you help them, you didn't open the door. Also, when somebody needs you to pray for them, you're like, nah, I can't do it. Let's talk. Respect, respect the person. When a brother was in, was in error or a sister was in error, instead of restoring that brother or restoring that sister back into the faith, y'all make a stitch video. This one is a false prophet. Y'all be in the comment section. Yeah, I knew that one was false too. Yeah, man, I, I knew something was off with that brother. See, he wasn't acting right. I just knew. Just he didn't sit in my spirit right. Y'all talk. Y'all give an evil. Y'all quick to give an evil report. But then expect a good report about you. Like you did something just by calling out a false prophet. You think you did something good. By doing a stitch video. Well here's the issue with that. The same way you called out publicly a false prophet. How come you don't restore them publicly. On your platform. The same way you would do a stitch video. And say hey this brother's a false teacher. Or this sister's a false teacher. How about you make another stitch video. And say hey brother we pray for you. We, 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 we welcome you back. If you repent of your sins. And we're going to pray for you right now. Restore that brother and sister back. Since y'all always doing it for likes. See, you want to do it in secret. You want to you reconcile with your brother and sister in secret. 
but you want to call out all the wolves in sheep clothing publicly. Look how hypocritical is that? I gave this analogy to my, my wife and I'm going to share this one with you guys because this is very powerful. You guys would never wear your suit to go to sleep. Oh, we going somewhere. But y'all would dress up to go to church every Sunday with a suit and a tie on. You know you don't dress like that. But you would dress up to go to church saying, Oh, you can't dress however you want in the house of God. You gotta have some holiness. Like ever dressing up equal holiness. Putting on makeup and mascara never equal to holiness. It is equals to vanity. Brother, you know you hot in that suit. And that ties all on your neck. You telling me that that equals holiness. You will bury the dead with a suit and a tie. Like, that's a good Imani suit, man. Worms gonna eat that up. You could have gave that to a homeless person. You could have gave that to Salvation Army. You won't give that to somebody who can't, who have no need of it. Why don't you bury them in the same clothes that they was wearing all the time? But y'all would never do that. Y'all spend so much money on a golden casket, which nobody can't see because it's under the ground. You will show all your love and your tribute to, oh, rest in peace. God has his soul. How do you know that? How do you know if that person went to heaven or hell? See, y'all don't want to talk good about the dead, but y'all don't want to talk good about the living. God is not a God of the dead. He's a God of the living. But here's the revelation. God rose from the dead, so he's the God of both the living and the dead. And look at the back of the picture. He's going to judge all the people who died. And if, you're not, if, your book, if your name is not written in the book of the living, the book of life, then you're going in the lake of fire, my friend. When I was hungry, you fed me not. When I was need of clothes, you clothed me not. When I was sick, you didn't call me. You didn't visit me. But you like to profess you a Christian. Huh? Christians? See, you're transgressors of the law because you are respecters of person. So I'm helping you understand the left hand side. The left hand. Let me show you how Jesus represented the right and the left. Yes, Jesus Christ represents the right hand of God. But look at what God did. He switched his hands. So... To the Jews who was expecting the Messiah to come in all his power, with all his might, and all his glory. Jesus Christ did the opposite. He's like, okay, I'm on here. They think I'm coming this way. Watch how I switch it up on them. I'm coming the other way. I'm coming like a, I'm coming like a carpenter. I'm coming like a regular nine to five guy. I'm coming with no attractiveness. I'm coming with no comeliness. Go read Isaiah chapter 53. That's your homework. We talked about that in the right hand of God. We're not talking about that again. So read Isaiah chapter 50, 53. Sorry. That's your homework. It's a whole chapter about the Messiah and how you have to suffer rejection, persecution, and be despised. Right? So when Jesus did this, right hand on the left hand, right? You guys are expecting him to come in his glory, but he's like, nah, I came to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, forgive the, the, the woman who was caught in adultery, and tell him, sin no more. I came to show grace on the left. You guys are... Accuse the left of being in fornication. You will accuse the, the, the left of being in homosexuality. You will accuse the left of being a tranny. You will accuse the left for touching little kids. But you can't even show grace to them. Well, guess what? I'm going to show grace to these people that you don't show grace to. Because the honest truth, even if you didn't do it on the outside, you did it on the inside. How did we do it on the inside, Lord? When you watch the corn. I hope y'all say amen to that too. When you watch the corn, you're like, I don't touch little kids, Lord. But yeah, but you did when you watched the corn with R. Kelly. Yeah, you yeah, you did that. When you was lusting after your niece and nephews, yeah, you did that. Aunties. Don't think, oh, you wanna you wanna accuse the uncles over here 
for touching little girls, but look at your aunties touching little boys. We're not talking about that, though. Hmm? Go watch that video called Superfluous Society. It's on YouTube. I talked about respect of persons. Oh, y'all want to abuse people at the workplace, sexual harassment, but okay, let's, let's talk about your sexual harassment too. See, because God sees both left and right. In God, there's no darkness at all, just light. So he sees the moon and the sun out. And let's go to another revelation. Revelation says that there will be no need for the sun or the moon because the world will be lighted by the lamp. Give me a second. Give me a second. All right. Put a one in the chat if you guys can see me. Let's keep, let's keep, let's keep it cooking. Remember, in Revelations, God said he will be the light of the world. So there will be no need of the sun and the moon. Yes, the sun and the moon is going to still be in the sky. But that wouldn't enlighten the world. It, the Bible says in, in, in Corinthians chapter 13, it says in verse 9, it says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, until the fullness of the perfect come, then that which is in part will be done away with. What's in part? Knowledge. Knowledge. So when, the, when God revealed himself to the Jews, it was in part. He revealed part of himself to the Jews, but he didn't reveal himself to the Gentiles. Now, God reveals another side of himself to the Gentiles that he didn't reveal to the Jews. Why? Because when God revealed a certain side of himself to the Jews in the gospel, they did not recognize him. They was expecting riches, honor, and glory, and majesty, and kingdom rulership. Because at that time, the Jewish government was under Roman government. The Jews were under Roman government. They wanted to override their Roman government. But God was not there for that at that time. His first coming was there to show he was under, he was, he was like, if you ever play those games like Metal Gear Solid, he was in stealth mode. He came to cloak himself in human flesh to be a sacrifice and atonement for our sins because he knew that the God of this world who is Satan, blinds the minds of them who don't believe the gospel. So to the Jews, when you preach the gospel, it's a stumbling block. Because when you start to preach the Jews about salvation, and you preach the Jews about being saved, and you, you don't need to do all of that, brother. You just need to believe. They're like, nah, brother, what are you talking about? You got to keep the law. Nah, brother, you got to keep the Sabbath. Nah, brother, you got to put on the fringes. No, you don't have to do all that, brother. If you truly believe from your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, regardless if you wear fringes, regardless if you keep the Sabbath or you don't, God will receive you as a son. The spirit bear witness with your spirit that you are what? A child of God. If you repent of your wicked ways and your idolatries, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your what? Sins. And you shall what? Receive the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost lives on the outside or does the Holy Ghost live on the inside? Put your answers in the comment section. So whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised, whether you're Jew or you're Gentile, whether you're male or you're female, you're bond or you're free, we're one in what? Christ, right hand, left hand. The left hand represents the law and the right hand represents grace and mercy. You can't have one without the other. So when God revealed one side of himself, which was the law, the statutes and commandments to Israel, the other side has to be understood so the fullness of God can manifest. The fullness of God will manifest once we understand the law and grace and combine the two. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments because Ezekiel chapter 36 explains this as this. I will take away the stony heart. Amen. You said the law is written on your heart. I was about to get to that. Thank you. You beat me to it. He will write his laws in your inward parts. He will write his laws in your mind and in your heart. 
So yeah, let's talk about respect of persons one more time. You said that person who committed homosexuality acted on his sin. So his sin is exposed. But who's God going to show mercy to first? Is he going to show mercy to the person who is concealing their homosexuality? Or he's going to show mercy and grace to the person who has exposed their sins? Put your answers in the comment section. So you're like, oh, I never did that, brother. Um, that's not like, that's, that's abomination. Yeah, we know that's an abomination. We're not going to sit here and lie about that. But here, you watch corn with that. And also, you practice this with your girlfriend or your wife. You have anal sex. So, you're committing sodomy just as much as the homosexual brothers committing sodomy. You don't think it's sodomy because you're like, oh, it's a woman. But in God's eyes, he says, sodomy. Depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. You dress up with a suit and a tie. But your insides is the same as the person who's outside being exposed. So you are, you expose the false prophet, but there's still false prophets in your midst. You just didn't get caught yet. Let's take off all the let's take off all the hair hats. Let's take off all the weaves, the tattoos, strip naked and be bare. Let's open your wicked heart and let's see if you have the laws of God written in your wicked heart. Because if God's laws is not written in your wicked heart, you are not. I am not accepting any invites, my friends. So don't not hit me up with invites. I will block you. All right. Watch if you got any comments. Leave it in the comment section. I am not inviting nobody in this chat room. So I don't know what's going on with that. All right. You guys, let's go to math. Let's go to Mark chapter 10. Again, it says, but to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. There's two places being prepared. Hell is a place prepared for Satan and his angels and those who rebel against God and his kingdom. So hell is a place prepared for you as well as heaven is a place prepared for you. When he says, I go to prepare a place for you, he's talking to his disciples in that, re in that regard. But what about the people who are not his disciples? Well, yes, they also get a place prepared for them as well. Just the same place where Satan and his angels will be casted into. You guys who rebel against God and don't keep his laws, statutes, and commandments, who are not saved by the grace of God, who do not accept the mercies in the grace of God, that's where you're going. To the pit. So, I need you brothers and sisters to understand that God is a just God. He has to judge sin. That's left hand. If you sin against God, he has to punish your sin because he is holy just and righteous so that's why when you look at the old testament and you saw how god was punishing sin destroying sodom and gomorrah you would say man that's crazy how god was acting in the old testament because he was showing you the justice side not saying that god never showed no mercy and grace in the old testament because if you really read the old testament you will see how much times God gave grace and mercy to his nations and even those who were in rebellion to him. You just don't understand the nature of God nor the mindset of God. He didn't reveal that to you yet. So all you're going to be do all you're going to do is be stuck on the New Testament way of things. You're going to like, "Oh, hey, we're saved by grace." Jesus Christ came as the lamb. He came to die for our sins and he says sin no more. But in the Old Testament, he was judging sin swiftly. So you think that the Jesus of the New Testament is not the same old Jesus of the Old Testament. Well, what Jesus Christ said in the parables, he said, before Abraham was, I am. Abraham rejoiced to see what? My day. He's like, you're not even 50 years old, Jesus. How are you saying you seen Abraham? Because Jesus was the angel of the Lord. In the Old Testament, when it says Abraham was pleading with the Lord about Sodom and Gomorrah, when he said, hey, if you find 50 righteous people or 45 righteous people, 30, 35, would you spare that, spare that, um, spare, spare that city? Who is he talking to? Was he talking to the father or was he talking to the son? Put your answers in the comment section. In the Old Testament, when Abraham was talking to the Lord, was he talking to the Son of God or was he talking to the Father? 
Let's see if you was really paying attention. Put your answers in the comment section. Give me a second. You said the sun. Anybody else? Need some active participants? I was on it. I, I got I understand where you're coming from, brother. Okay, keep going. I need one more person before we start talking. You said both. Sammy, I'm going to help you out. Everybody that said the son is correct. The father is spirit, right? Not to say that the father wasn't in the Old Testament. The father and the son are one, right? So I understand where you're coming from, but let me help you out. Jesus Christ is the visible image of God. If God is spirit and the Bible says no one has seen the father, Right? Because God is spirit. And you could you see a spirit? No. So the visible image, if God if Abraham was talking to the Lord, he couldn't be talking to the Father at that time. He's talking to the Son, the visible image of God. So Sammy put a one in the chat if you understand the assignment. So Jesus Christ, before he even incarnated in the flesh, he was Jesus Christ in the old and he's Jesus Christ in the new. He just didn't incarnate it. See, what makes the New Testament different from the old is that Jesus Christ incarnated. It says, behold, a virgin shall conceive. Tell me any woman who never had sex with a man conceives a child. That should tell you that that is the Lord. He says, the Lord of hosts will perform this. What did Gabriel say to Mary in the, in the, in the gospel? He said, yo, the Holy Spirit will overshadow thee. Jesus Christ is the Holy Ghost, the Father, and the Son. A lot of you guys get caught up in this Trinitarian doctrine. Yes, God has a triune nature, but he's not three separate beings. I explained this in my last video, so I'm going to explain it again. Just think about water. What is water called? H2O, right? Water has three different phases. Look at that Trinity right there. Water can become a solid Water is a liquid, but water also can become a gas. So we say the Holy Spirit is gas, vapor, invisible. The Father is the liquid. Life is in the blood. Jesus Christ came to atone for our sins through what? The blood. When the Roman soldier pierced his side, what came out of Jesus' right side of his body? Blood and water. Right? Now, Jesus Christ became flesh. It says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among men. Here in that, water becomes solid. Jesus Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. So Jesus Christ goes through three phases, three forms, but all of those forms are not separate from one another. Each form has an individual attribute that the other forms don't have. If you are a solid, you're solid. You can't move. You're, you're stuck. Liquid is fluid. It moves around. It does a different function than ice. Ice does a different function for water and vapor. Vapor is air. Air, you cannot see air. So God is spirit, so you can't see spirit. So when God is in spirit form, you can't see him, but he's there, right? So when he starts to manifest, he turns into what? A liquid. Think about why Jesus Christ said he's coming back in the clouds. And think about the nature of what? Clouds. When all these clouds start to come together, they form thunder. Thunder, precipitation, condensation. So when the, all the vapors come together and they start to create liquid. When liquid starts to harden, it turns into solid ice. So Jesus Christ is both Father, Word, Holy Ghost. These three are one. Do you understand the assignment, brothers and sisters, now? It's not three different gods. When you're looking at titles, when it says Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of God, then who sits at the left hand of Jesus? That's the answer. If Jesus sits at the right hand of God, then who's at his left? Put your answers in the comment section. Let's see what y'all got. Let's see. Let's see what y'all if y'all been paying attention. If Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, who's on his left? 
Holy Spirit, okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? If Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father, who's on his left? You see, because y'all following this Trinitarian doctrine, which comes from the Catholic system. A lot of you guys are Catholics. Y'all need to be rebaptized. Because the Catholics and Christianity is two different things. Catholics worship Mother Mary. We don't worship Mother Mary. We know that Mary, yes, she gave birth to Jesus in the flesh, but Mary is not the queen of heaven. Mary was a regular human woman. See, this gets into Ashtoreth and Baal worship. Because Ashtoreth is known as what? The queen of heaven. That's polytheism. We serve a monotheistic God that has a triune nature. Let me say that one more time. We serve a monotheistic. What does it mean to be mono? One. We serve a monotheistic God that has three different functions, triune nature, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, ice, water, vapor. I just gave y'all an analogy. If, if God didn't open up your understandings to understand that, that means that you're not ready to receive that yet. But I will pray, Heavenly Father, I pray that all those who are watching this video will receive this message, this revelation that's been revealed in this video in spirit and in truth, and that you will help them to understand your nature and how you appeared throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament. You appeared as a burning bush. You appeared as the angel of the Lord. Your titles is son of God, son of David, son of man, mighty counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. Emmanuel, God is with us, Holy Ghost. See what I'm saying? The Lord of hosts. These are titles. But you don't understand the titles because you don't understand the God you serve. When God was in the Old Testament, he went by the name of Jehovah. In the New Testament, he went by the name of Jesus because every title holds a different responsibility or a different side of God that God is choosing to reveal to whoever he's choosing to reveal. So to the Jews and the Gentiles, to the Jews, he's revealed his name is Jehovah. To the Gentiles, he's revealed his name is Yeshua or Jesus Christ. So when you got these Hebrew Israelites that only go to back to the Torah and they go back to the law and they're like, oh, there's no J's in the Hebrew alphabet, brother. You didn't get the revelation. Because God revealed that name to the Gentiles. Just like I gave you with the analogy, the sun and the moon. If the sun is on the east, then the moon is on the west. If the sun is on the west, then the moon is on the east. So when God switches, he said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Now you get to understand what he meant. When God came in the flesh the first time, y'all didn't even recognize him because he cloaked his glory. He cloaked his presence. He came as an ordinary man and he only revealed who he was to certain men. Look what he did with Peter. He said, who do men say that I am? What did Peter say? You are the Messiah, the son of God. What was Jesus' response to Peter? He said, no flesh and blood has revealed this to you, Peter. No seminary school has revealed this to you. But my father, who's are in heaven, Who's, your, who's the Father? Spirit. So in order for you to know who Jesus Christ is, the visible image of God, right? The God who's in spirit must reveal to you in your spirit who Jesus is. So who's on the left side of Jesus? If Jesus Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father, is the Father. Because God is spirit. So that's the answer. God controls the left and the right. When God chooses to reveal himself, he reveals his right hand. When God chooses to conceal himself, he uses his left hand. Let me say that one more time. When God chooses to conceal himself, he conceals his right hand. So that's like the left hand covering the right hand. So when Jesus Christ came in the gospel, he covered his right hand and only revealed his right hand to whoever believed in faith. Hope y'all caught that. So in order for God to reveal his son, Jesus, he has to reveal his what? 
grace. He has to reveal what? His right hand. If you get a revelation from God, that's because God has revealed his what? Hand from his bosom. What does it mean to have your hand in your bosom? I'm concealing my right hand. I'm concealing my avatar. I'm concealing my flesh. I'm concealing my image. That's why God told those people in the Old Testament, in the God, in, in, in the Old Testament, he says, do not make any graven images up above, down below, on the earth, on the sea. Why? Because he already has an image. The son is in the, the heart of the bosom of the father. He's already concealed. His right hand, when he's ready to reveal, revelation comes. Healing comes. Mercies come. Right? If you reject the right hand, here comes the left hand. Judgment. Persecution. That's why when Jesus Christ went into the wilderness, who led him into the wilderness? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what? The Father who's in spirit. God is what? Spirit. I'm giving you this scripture. I'm not giving you Neil's words. I'm giving you what the Father's put in my spirit. Think about it. Jesus got baptized by John the Baptist. That was symbolic of death, burial, and resurrection. Because what do we have? To, what has God commanded us all to do? Repent. Be baptized, every single one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, right? Father, Son, Holy Ghost, name is Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins, and you shall what? Receive the Holy Ghost. So when Jesus Christ received the Holy Ghost, he said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I well please. Who was that revealed to? Was that revealed to all the people at that place who witnessed Jesus Christ's baptism? Or all or that was only revealed to John the Baptist because John the Baptist's purpose was to be a witness of that light. Who is what? Christ. So when he heard the father speak from heaven, behold, this is my son, my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Meaning the father has to reveal the son in order for you to know, hey, here comes the lamb of God, the one who came to... To die on the cross for our sins. Because that was the first thing John the Baptist said. When he saw Jesus. Who was concealed. He didn't reveal his glory. He was what? Concealed. He said. Hey. That's Jesus. The Lamb of God. These people are like. I don't see him. Yeah because he didn't reveal himself to you yet. When Jesus reveals who he is. It's when he comes back in the clouds. So let's go to Matthew chapter 25 one more time. Look what it says. When the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So that's when the right hand is sitting at the right hand of the father. When the, that means that the son comes into the power. Remember in John chapter 17, he says, give me the glory that I had with you in the beginning when he was praying to the father. He said, give me back the glory that I had with you in the beginning. Because Jesus Christ was always in the bosom of the father in the beginning. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was revealed and the word was made flesh going from a vapor, liquid, Ice. Look at those three. Look at that trinity. Vapor, spirit, liquid, blood, because you have li your blood is what? Liquefied light. What did the Bible say about blood? Life is in the blood. The reason why they needed an atonement for their sins because their, their, their blood was what? Defiled. That's why Jesus Christ needed to create a body to be the Lamb of God to atone for human sin. Animals cannot atone for human sins. So when we saw all this Levitical priesthood sacrificing the animals in the Old Testament, that was only a foreshadow of a greater revelation in the New Testament. If you were sacrificing goats and, and, and animals in the Levitical priesthood, right? For the atonement of men's sin. And look at how much times they had to do that. They had to do that once a year. Jesus Christ only did this one time. You do this every year, 
You sacrifice a goat and a calf every year, every Passover. But Jesus Christ did it what? One time. So when you accept Jesus Christ, is it a million times or is it one time? If you get a water baptism and you did it the right way, I'm not talking about if you was a Catholic. If you're Catholic, you, ne you did never, never experience a baptism. Catholics do not baptize the same way as Christians. I'm talking about if you went and got a Christian baptism. Now, what is a Christian baptism? Christian baptism means full submersion. Just like how you saw John the Baptist baptize Jesus in the water, that's the same way you're supposed to be baptized. You cannot baptize no kids because kids are not responsible for themselves. They're not accountable. You know what's an adult? Me and my wife was talking about this uh, a couple weeks ago or a week ago. We talked about this, right? Think about the word 18 and 19. That's not an adult. That's still, that's still a teenager. But in today's society, we will legalize 18, 17 years old, 19 year olds. These are teens. Think about the word teen. Are they an adult? Yes or no? Put your answers in the comment section below. Give me a second. 18, 19 years old. They're not adults. They're still minors. Be going somewhere with this. Hold on. If you read the Bible, it talks about an adult male is 20 years old. When they were doing a, a census with the tribes of Israel, God always said, number the males from 20 and up. It never said 18, 19. An adult male, an adult female is what? 20 and up. So are we going to follow biblical principle where God sees you as an adult? I, this is the funny thing. This is how I know this is biblical. Because when I got baptized and I gave my life to Christ, it was 20 years old. Put that in your pipe and smoke that. I gave my life to Christ at 20 years old. Because that is the age of accountability. You said you was 15. But see, 15 represents still being a child. Yes, you had knowledge of good and evil. Yes, you are, um, you may be in, uh, a child under your parents' control. But see, your parents is responsible. See, your mom's made you. So what I would say to you, Sammy, you can rededicate your life to Christ at this point. You may not have to go through with the baptism if you did it already. Just pray to the Holy Spirit about that. But you may have to rededicate your life to Christ because see, your moms and your pops, your parents are your legal guardians until 20. This is biblical. See, they tell you, the society tell you, oh, you're an adult at 18 years old. But 18-year-olds are still children. 19-year-olds are still children. Look at the word 20. There's no teens in 20. It's not 20 teens. It's 20. <laughs> a man, a woman is 20. So y'all been pushing pedophilia without even realizing y'all been pushing pedophilia. Y'all legalize 18 and 19 years old and say they're adults. But if you've been sleeping with an 18 or 19 year old, you've been committing pedophilia. So you're getting at the people who sleeping with younger kids like 14, 13. But y'all sleep with 18 and 19 years old. Y'all 20 something and 30 something year old adults. Let's talk. Oh, but the society says 18 is the legal age of consent. Listen to what I just said. 18. Look at that last word, teen. I rest my case. I know a lot of y'all offended. So y'all like to offend the offenders and say they're offenders. You will judge them, but you've been sleeping with people 18 and 19. You're 20 something years old, so you're an offender. You might as well pull, you might as well uh, give yourself in. Respect of, you're a respect of person, see? If you can't show grace to these people, then how God's going to show you grace on judgment? Damn, just point that out. Because when God revealed this to me, Neil, 
the legal age of consent is always 20. It's in the Bible. Read the book of Numbers. When God was listing the people to go to war, he didn't say males from 18 and up. He says males from 20 and up. Women were considered women at the age of 20. Let's talk. See, we going there today. See, I'm talk see, y'all wasn't ready for me when I was talking about the right hand of God, because y'all just like to hear about the grace. But let's talk about the judgments now. Y'all thinking, okay, we're under the age of grace, brother. Yeah, we are. But a lot of you guys are abusing the grace. You don't say? What did Paul say? Is grace a license to sin? God forbid. But guess what? The only way you can stop abusing the grace is if the law of God is written in your heart. You said, what about the being, bat about being baptized in the Holy Ghost fire? Well, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is your persecutions. That is the baptism by fire. So let's look at this example. And I'm glad you brought that up, my brother, because I want to help you guys understand the right hand and the left hand. Jesus Christ said to John the Baptist, he says, behold. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Right? He revealed that to John. But look at what happened after he revealed that to John. It says the Holy Ghost led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. You, who was a born again Christian, you give your life to Christ, you get born again, you receive a water baptism. Amen. Child of God. Welcome to Christianity, child of God. Do we get blessings now? Wait, hold on a second. Before you get blessed, you must suffer with me. Oh, no, what did I sign up for? What did I sign? No, 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 come on. The Holy, be led by the Spirit now into your wilderness, just like Jesus had to be led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted you say, ain't God tempts? No, let's go to James chapter 1. What did James chapter 1 say? Don't be calling God evil over here because you misunderstand scripture. You didn't know what you signed up for. You just got jolly. You had false expectations. All of us had false expectations when we came into the faith. When I gave my life to Christ at the age of 20, I had false expectations. I only started knowing God at the age of 26 because from the age of 20 to 26 I was in fornication and I and God had to get me out of Babylon but when I gave my life to Christ God was my my guardian just like a, a child is not liable until they become an adult meaning their legal guardian is their mother and their father. That's why the Bible says, honor your parents that your days will be long. Why? Because they are your, what? Legal guardians. After 18 and 19 and you go to 20, you're an adult. They are no longer liable for you. You are responsible for you. So if you have gotten baptized the Catholic way at, oh, I got baptized when I was a baby. So Sammy, if you're still here and you say you got baptized at age of 15, let me ask you a question. Was it the Christian way or it was the Catholic way? See, if you did it the Catholic way, you automatically got to do it over again. Because the Catholics don't, they worship saints. And the Bible says, do not worship no other gods. You said the Christian way. I'm a seven day Adventist. I don't know about the seven day Adventist thing. I would say you need to be born again. You need to go set up a, ba a water baptism. Since you said you did it as a child, how old are you now? Put your answers in the comment section. Give me a second. How old are you now, Sammy? Because if you're an adult, right? Okay, 30. So you are at the legal age. You're responsible for yourself. Your moms and your pops are not responsible for you. You are. So now when you give your life to Christ, it matters. You know why it matters at this age? Because you are legal and you are responsible for yourself. Your moms and your pops, you still have a certain reverence for them, but they are not your legal guardians anymore. Jesus has to be your legal guardian. So when you give your life to Christ, right? After age 20 and up, Christ becomes your father. Your, so your mother and your father don't become your parents anymore. God becomes your parent.
Put a one in the chat. So when you give your life, rededicate your life back to Christ, go get a water baptism at a Baptist church, Pentecostal, non-denominational, or Presbyterian. Right? If God puts in your spirit that you don't really need to go through the water baptism, that's fine. Let this follow what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. But what I'm telling you to do, you need to rededicate your life back to Christ. You say your dad is a Pentecostal pastor. Amen. <laughs> what I would tell you to do, ask your dad to set up. A, since, he, since you've got access to your dad, you don't even have to wait till you go to church. To say, dad, I want to rededicate my life back to Christ. Can you come by the house and do a water baptism? If you got a bathtub big enough to fit you in, hey, dad, come over to the house. I want to give my life to Christ. I realized I learned something new today. I realized Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I want you to baptize me in the, in the, water, in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. You, give, you rededicate your life. So set that up today, brother. Put a one in the chat. Get your dad to come out. I'm pretty sure you'd be happy in a blush too. You don't need to go to a church. You can go to a pool. You go to you go to the lake, any body of water. You could do it in your bathtub, or you could go to this house. Say, Dad, let's do this right now. I got my I got my clothes. Got my stranger clothes. Let's do this. Cause now you're at the age of consent. That's why anybody who's 18 and 19, they're still kids. So all you people who say, Oh, you sleep with little kids. Well, you've been sleeping with little kids. You've been hanging around the high schools looking for 18, 19 year olds. Let's talk. You thought they were adults because the society said? So are you going to listen to what the society say? Or are you going to listen to what the Bible say? Okay. Let's talk. So you need to repent for your respect of persons. Show grace to the homosexual. Show grace to the people who are sexually confused. Show grace to the minor attraction the same way you will want that grace shown to you. You, you Pharisees and whitewashed tombs. Let's talk. Christ has came to die for all sin, for everybody. Nobody is going to be exempt from receiving his grace. And nobody is going to be exempt from judgment day. Oh God, I'm, I, I'm saved. I gave my life to you. Okay. Roll the tape. Let's roll the tape. Let's go, let's go to James because I want to show y'all something. I, I, was, I was going to that. Look what he's talking about. Verse 13 of James chapter 1. Let no man say that when he's tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt thee any man. See, this is why the left hand is not talked about, but the right hand of God is talked more. Right? I said the left hand represents uncertainty. It represents the law. It represents restrainer. Right? It represents judgment. If you go to the book of Job, that's a perfect example. We're going to talk about this and wrap this up. The book of Job, when God told Satan, what do you think about my servant Job, right? A righteous man, perfect, upright, a screw evil. What does Satan say? If you take this, that, and away from him, he will curse you to your heart, right? He will curse you to your face, not your heart. Sorry, God, right? He says, okay, I leave him in your hands, but spare his life. So the left hand deals with judgment. So when God puts his left hand on you, you're being tested. You say, God, why? Why am I going through all this? God is not tempting you. It's the devil who he said to test you is tempting you. The devil is an extension of the left hand. I don't think y'all ready for that yet. So you what you trying to say? God is the devil? No, fool. Listen to what I just said. What did Jesus Christ say to the devil in the book of Job? Who brought up the who brought up the, the report about Job? Was it the devil or was it God? Put your answers in the comment section. Let's, let's read this through. When all the sons of God presented themselves before God and God asked Satan, where are you coming from? He says, to and fro the earth, up and down in it. He's just reporting to God. But who brought up, 
who brought up the conversation about Job? Was it God or was it the devil? Put your answers in the comment section. Let's see if you're paying attention. I want to see some answers. I want y'all to be participants. You said God. Okay, Sammy. Yes, God. God brought up. He bragged about Job. Look at this pattern that God does. He bragged about Job. He said he's a perfect, upright man. We know that no man on earth is perfect except for Christ. But look at what God said about his servant Job. What do you think about my servant Job? A righteous man. It says, the Bible says, no man is righteous but what? God. He says, a, a, a upright man. One who fears God and is screw evil. Satan said, hey, you take this away from him, he'll curse you to your face. So notice the pattern of God in the Bible. God presents the sons of God in a congregation, an assembly. He talks about what he's going to do. He explains who is, who is his sheep. He brags about them to the congregation. Hey, what do you think about my servant, Neil? What do you think about my servant, Emmanuel? What do you think about my servant, Himalayan mama? Who do you think about my servants? What do you think about them? Um... If you take this away from them, they'll curse you to your face. If you put them in this situation. So Satan is the one who is telling God what he's going to do. And if God approves of it, he removes his hand. He removes his hand, meaning he removes the restrainer. So when Jesus went into the wilderness, he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. Right after God said, Behold, my son, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Approved of Jesus. Said, hey, this is my beloved son. But also I'm going to allow him to go through suffering, persecution, rejection for my name's sake. So if you just want blessings and then you want to be called a child of God, but you don't want to go through the rejection, the persecution, the temptation. For his name's sake, you don't understand the God you serve. You can't have good without the bad. And look, look what Job said to his wife when, when Job's wife would say, curse God and die. Remember that? Remember when Job's wife was like, why don't you curse God and die? What do you say? How could you only bless God for the good and not praise him for the evil? He never mentioned one thing about Satan. He didn't even know that Satan was testing him. His focus was only on God. He said, you got to praise God for the good and the bad. And when Job saw God, what did God do? Did, did, did God even disclose anything about Satan attacking Job? Did he even mention anything about, he said, gird yourself up like a man and answer me this. Where were you when I created the foundations of the world? Where were you? When the angels, the sons of God, the morning stars were singing. Where were you when I created Leviathan and Behemoth? Where were you? And Job had to what? Humble himself. So who are you? Brother and sisters watching this video right now. To say that God is evil because he allowed injustices in this society. Who are you to say who God should show mercy to and who God shouldn't show mercy to. God is no respecter of any person. He deals with the right and he deals with the left. So if he prays you on the right, you got to suffer on the left. And if you're suffering on the left, he got to exalt you on the right. That's why he says, I exalt the humble and humble the proud. Oh, I don't think y'all caught that. I humble the proud and I exalt the humble. So if you humble yourself, he will exalt you. But if you pride yourself in pride parade, people, you think you got some type of liberty, he will humble you. So watch yourself celebrating Pride Month this, this year. If you have received this message in spirit and truth, put a one in the chat. So if you want to pride about my body, my choice, I'll do whatever I want. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown adult. I don't need nobody to tell me what to do. Okay. 
Pride before the fall. That's how y'all falling away. If you want God to hold you in faith, then you humble yourself. God ain't going to do that for you. You have to humble yourself before God. Job is trying to justify himself, even though his friends would say, hey, you did this. They were accusing him. Job was standing on his ground, but Job was like demanding God, hey, tell me why are you doing all of this? Right? He's like, why are you doing all of this? And he said, answer me, Job. Answer me this. Where were you? Who am I to answer to you? So anybody got an accusation or an evil report towards God? Because you're like, why would you allow these innocent people to die? Why would you allow these things, negative things to happen to me? Answer me this, brother. Answer me this, sister. Where were you when I created this world? Where were you when I laid the foundations thereof? How many strands do you have in your hair? Why are you wearing something that doesn't belong to me? Hmm? Why are you telling me I have to accept you with something that I didn't even create it on you? You say, come as you are, but I didn't say that. Men say that. Your pastors say that. Let's talk. See, y'all choking up. See, because y'all want to parade your pride and you want to parade that you're righteous and none is righteous but God. When you humble yourself before God and you cover yourself in sackcloth, right? And you say, woe is me. I'm a man or woman of unclean lips. You know what God's going to do? He's going to show you mercy because you did the right thing. You humbled yourself. But if you don't humble yourself and you asking God and you're demanding God, why are you allowing the evil and injustices to run in the world when he's allowing you to live and breed in the same world? How many times have you went out there and committed fornication? How many times have you slept around with other people you know God was telling you not to slip around, but he didn't punish you right then and there? He didn't give you an STD right then and there. How, how come you how come you been sleeping around with your boyfriend's sisters and you didn't get pregnant yet? Heard what I said? Yet. But it's going to come a day you keep living in fornication. He's going to punish you because you're abusing what? The grace. You think because he didn't punish you yet? Brother, you think because he ain't punished you yet? Why, why, why are you complaining about child support, brother? He gave you enough grace to repent when you were sleeping around with all your baby mamas and you was just pregnant and all these women. Now he's like, okay. I was trying to give you grace the first couple of times. The first time you got a woman pregnant, I didn't put that name in. I didn't make your baby moms put you on child support yet. But you keep going out there. You ain't learned your lessons the first time. You didn't, when the woman say, when you, you going to marry me? When you going to go to the courthouse and set this right? Nah, I'm not ready yet. All that time when you were saying you was not ready yet, that was God's grace and mercy on you. Now he's going to give you the second baby mama and she's not going to have no mercy on you because you didn't, you didn't display righteousness. You didn't deal with the first baby mama with righteousness, so you think you're going to get away? I'm talking to you brothers today. I usually get on the sisters, but I'm talking to you brothers today. And then you complaining, talking about you're going to get your passports and go to another land because you're like, all the women in America are wicked. But you are promoting the wickedness in America. You are promoting the girl on girl action. You are promoting the women dressing like harlots. Why? Because they weren't dressed like that unless you set the standard. So you can't get at the sisters for dressing like that when you guys are promoting this in corn. You want to see a sister dress like that, but it comes with a cost. There will be no respect. You won't get no respect as a man. You will be hated by all men and women. That's what comes with it. That's what the society promotes. No man don't get no justice in this society, especially a heterosexual man. Why? Because the devil hate men. And he's already programmed your sisters to hate men. So if your men are not setting the proper example, it always falls back on the man at the end of the day. Brother, why is this happening to me? Because you're not a godly man. Let's talk. 
to go to the book of Proverbs. It says a wicked, a wicked woman is a portion of a sinner. A man who's a sinner, his, his portion is a wicked woman. Let's go to the Bible. When God told Israel not to mess with strange women from other nations because they will turn your heart away from God. Go to the book of Numbers chapter 25. These, these people are supposed to be men of God, but they allowing Midianite women, strange women in the camp. Remember Phineas? He had to stab them in the chest or in the stomach because he brought a Midianite woman in the camp and having sex in the middle of the congregation. Lawlessness. And y'all talking about what happened to all the good women? Well, every single good woman that was a potential good woman, you, you defiled in your fornication. And now you're asking, oh, you defile all the women in America. Now you want to go to another land, a strange nation that worship other gods. You want to go defile them too? Well, God going to punish you with a strange woman. That's your portion for you sinners. Put a one in the chat. All you red pill brothers that talk about, oh, pump and dump. Oh, you got to have multiple wives. Yeah, but don't why it's going to be your undoing. Think about Solomon, who was given wisdom by God. The wisest man, second to God. With all that wisdom, you still fell away. God gave you warning ahead of time. He said, do not multiply wives from other nations, strange women who worship other gods. You're like, I like those. I don't like the plain old Mary Jane. I don't like the woman with the, the, the scarf on. I want the woman with the hair hat. I don't like the woman who's clothed and covered. I like the woman with the, with the boobs and the breasts out and the, and the booty out. Yeah, I like that. Well, that's what comes with the territory. You get what you want. You, got, you get what you ask for. You can't complain and say, God, why I'm getting this? Why am I suffering? Well, you're suffering because your heart is evil. And God is going to give you what your heart desires, your evil heart. Unless you write, unless God writes his laws in your wicked heart, you will always desire the evil and reject the good. Just like you rejected your Messiah and you persecuted him and nailed him to the cross. You're going to do that to all his prophets. So don't be coming in the chat room saying, amen, man of God. If we follow Christ and, and Christ was persecuted, then all those who follow Christ will suffer persecution. God is no respect of any person. If he did it to his only beloved son, who is the savior of us all, who are you? You heathens? Who are you, you Hebrew Israelites standing on the street corners talking about the white man can't get salvation, talking about the white man is Esau? Well, I thought Jesus Christ said salvation to all, both Jew and Gentiles. So if you're saying that only Jewish people can get salvation, Jews, Hebrews, Israelites can only get salvation, but Gentiles can't, you are erring. Greatly, my friend. You have head knowledge, but you don't have grace in your heart. See, you can't have this head knowledge without balancing it out with the grace. And you just can't have grace in your heart, but not head knowledge up here. You got to have law intertwined with grace. You have to have the law of God marry the grace of God. That's how Christ marries the church. He presents to himself a church without what? Spot or wrinkle. Sisters, you can't say I want a, 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 a man of God, but you want to submit to a man at all. Brothers, you can't say I want a woman of God, but don't love a woman when she's doing certain things. You don't want to show her love and grace. You want to abuse. Wives, submit unto your husbands as unto the Lord. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. That's the balance. You must learn how to submit and love each other. You must learn how to submit and serve each other. If you just want to be served and don't want to serve, you're off. If you're only serving and not allowing nobody to serve you, you're off. You're relying on your self-works. We are not saved by, we are not saved by works, we're saved by grace. But that doesn't mean God is not going to set us apart for works. 
You, have, you see the balance? We're not saved by works. But yes, God will set us apart for works. To represent Christ. Put a one in the chat if you guys understand the assignment. So do you understand the left hand and the right hand now? I'm going to end this chapter off with this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 20 to 29. Let's, 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 let's read this real quick. Sorry guys, I got cold. It's, it's all right. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 20 to 29. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna read this real quick and then I'm gonna read Joe's chapter 23 verses 8 to 10. I want to get through all my notes. All right, so 1 Corinthians this is verse 22 to 29. So everybody in the chat room moderates, please pin this in the chat room. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 22 to 29. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. Okay, Holy Spirit, thank you for telling me this. Go to verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Onto the Jews a stumbling block, and onto the Greeks foolishness. But onto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and things which are despised as God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh shall glory in his presence. So God would choose the foolish things of this world, things that you despise. You're like, oh, you asking for a husband, sisters. But then you always this you always rejecting the ones that's not your type. What if God is sending you the one that is your husband and he's not your type? Why? Because you're so used to the pookies and the rain rays, you're so used to the white beaters, you don't know how to recognize a man of God. You used to a man making a certain amount of money, but then you have a guy that work a regular nine to five, you're like, ah, oh, he's beneath me. But what if that's the one that God has for you? Food for thought. Same thing with you brothers. You asking for a woman of God, but every time you see a woman clothe herself, she's not showing her body to like uh attract male attention. Or you're like, oh, you the minute you talk to her on the phone, send me a booty pic. Nah, I don't do that. Nah, you want to get to know me, you gotta get to know. Ah oh, man, if you're not trying to have sex, I ain't messing with you. That could have been your wife. But since you still have worldly ways. You still call about it in a carnal way. So the wisdom of God is wiser than men. And the weaknesses of God are stronger than men. What you think is weak is not really weak. What you think is not your type is really your type chosen by God for you before the foundations of the world. So put a one in the chat. Change your perspective and open up your spiritual eyes. Now let's go to... Job chapter 23, verses 8 and 10. Oh, uh, man, you'll put this in the chat room, my brother. Job chapter 23, verses 8 to 10. I ran it on along enough. I think that's enough content for y'all to listen to. Let's get into the meat of the word. Let's look at Job chapter 23. Let's see verses 8 and 10. Faith 8 to 10. It says, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backwards, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hided himself. Give me a second. I'm going to turn this off. No co-host. Now I got to do that over. Stop coming in the chat room. Not doing no lives. Right? Invites. Let's go back to Joe. Uh, moderates, please put this in the chat room. Joe chapter 23, verses 8 to 10. Let's go back one more time. Y'all yeah, yeah, disrupting the chat room. Stop that. All right, it says, Behold, I go forward, but he's not there, and backwards, but I cannot perceive him. 
on the left hand, where he does work, says the father is in secret. The father's on the left hand. He works in secret. Let's see. On the right hand, it says on the left hand where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hided himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. So God works on the left hand, but you cannot perceive him and behold him. And he's on the right. So this is my right hand. This is my left hand. Look at how he's doing. He's working. He's working. He's doing his work. You don't understand the ways of God. It says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Thus saith the Lord. So when you judge somebody based on their outward appearance, you're misjudging. Because you don't know what God is doing on that other side. You're like, oh, that's not my type. But you don't know what God is doing on that other side. Don't be so quick to judge appearances. Pay attention. Ask for discernment. Look what he says. On the left hand where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hided himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When, I, when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Let's say that one more time. But he knoweth the way that I take. I mean, he knoweth your heart. He knows your intentions of your mind and your heart. You say, God knows my heart. But do you know? You don't think God's listening to every thought that comes up in your mind? You don't think he sees all your wicked thoughts that come up in your imagination, your daydreaming, your hallucinations, your crazy delusions, how you feel about people? God knows everything. You think God don't see you because you don't see God. You think God don't see you because you believe that I have to visibly see God. But God said, that's why he said, I'm going to come... I'm going to come like a thief in the night. God is not going to come like a thief in the night if you already recognize that God is already there. Whether you see him or don't see him. That is the mystery of this. Right? You guys that are always looking for a rapture, you don't think, you don't think God is here right now. You don't think God is in this chat room right now. Some of you guys are like, I don't believe this is this is not this is not my cup of tea. Why did I scroll to this live? Yeah. Why did you? Why did you? See, because you had an expectation. Your heart deceived you. You thought I was going to talk about something else. Till you realized I was talking about Jesus. And your heart deceived you. But guess what? God works on the left. And he hides himself on the right hand. God will reveal who he wants to reveal to. God will reveal himself to whoever he chooses to reveal. All I'm here to do is give you information. When God reveals the revelation of the information that is provided to you, that is God revealing his what? Right hand. Put a one in the chat if you understand the assignment. If you do not get the understanding of anything that was said in this video, that means God did not reveal it to you yet. But you can't pray to the father who's in secret. To, to ask him, God, I didn't understand anything that the brother was saying in this video. I was having a hard time following. But thank you, Father God, for using this brother to reveal to me information that you will later reveal to me. Whatever I don't understand, thank you, Father God, for opening up my understanding. Thank you, Father God, for revealing your right hand. Thank you, Father God, for revealing your image of your son, Jesus. Jesus don't have to appear in the room for him to reveal Jesus, God can reveal, reveal his son through your heart. How do God reveal his son through your heart? Conviction. Every time you hear a convicting message that convicts you and pricks you at your heart, where you're like, man, I am living sinful. Oh, I, I thought I was living right. I thought I was doing the right thing by being in boyfriend, girlfriend relationship. But, but when this brother said, hey, where in the Bible is there anything called boyfriend and girlfriend? It's called husband and wife. So if you are shacking up with somebody who you say that's your baby mama, but you ain't calling her your wife, you're in fornication. Oh, wow, I'm convicted. It's an aha moment. So when you get that aha moment, that's God revealing his son. Put a one in the chat. So now that you have that conviction, don't just sit on that conviction. You have to act. That's what it means. I will show you my faith 
by my works. So the works is a side effect of your saving faith. The works is an action of your faith. Faith without action is what? Dead. So faith without works is what? Dead. Do you get the answer now? So if you get convicted and the Holy Spirit is revealed revelation to you, now you must act. So if you got convicted about being in boyfriend and girlfriend relationships, let's give you an example. But if you have been convicted of that, you need to do the right thing. Now, what's the right thing? Y'all need to like break up if you're not really serious and you don't feel that this is the one. Or you could do the right thing and say, hey, I'm not going to look for the one. I already found it. Hey, I want to be with this. I want to be with this guy. Or I want to be with this woman for the rest of my life. If we already had kids, you might as well just te- you might as well just go to the courthouse so they can stop charging me for child support. <laughs> I can just go to the courthouse, have her take my last name, and we're legally husband, ma- husband and wife. And in God's sight, what you did the right thing because you're not trying to not be committed. God doesn't even like divorce. God wants you to be committed. So if you're in boyfriend girlfriend relationship, you're not even committed. You partially committed. You playing you playing marriage without being married. That's a counterfeit to marriage. So the dating world is a counterfeit to what marriage. But if you've been convicted of this message, then you need to act on that conviction and tie the knot. You don't even need to get a big ceremony. You just need to go to the courthouse, get some family members, six members, <laughs> including yourself, and go tie that knot. You don't even have to have a ring. I don't got no rings. Me and my wife tied the knot. We did what we had to do because we want to live righteous. We don't want to appear righteous. A lot of you guys want to go get big weddings and ceremonies because y'all want to appear righteous, but y'all don't want to live righteous. Your ring, your wedding ring is not going to show no fidelity. How many people have wedding rings and they're still in infidelity? Let's talk. How many people wear their wedding rings and when they want to go and cheat, they take off their wedding rings? Let's talk. You think a wedding ring saves you? You think having a big ceremony saves you? No, you keeping faithful to your vows and your promises to God. That's what justifies you before God. Just like when you say, I accept you, Jesus Christ, as my personal Lord and Savior. Well, how do you go through with the vows? How do you show that you really mean those words? Go get a water baptism in faith. Act on that faith that you say you believe in and go set up a water baptism today in the name of Jesus Christ and be baptized every single one of you for the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the Holy Ghost as a promise. It's biblical. It's scripture. Acts chapter 2 verses 37 and 38. So study that for those who don't know nothing about baptism. And uh, let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 18. Verses 18 to 22, you say, does God consider getting married for a green card or real marriage? If you didn't do it for the legit purpose of being together with that person, it's not legit. So that's a good question. You said, does God consider getting married for a green card, a real marriage? It's fraudulent because you didn't want to, you only did it for fraudulent reasons. If you marry, it's forever till death do his part. It says a wife is bound to the law as long as a what? Husband live it. So one person that could marry is widows, meaning your husband or your spouse had to die so that you could remarry. So even if somebody went out and cheated on you, God don't even want you divorcing them. You could put them away because of their fornication. But it, it says in the scripture of First um, Corinthians chapter 7, it says, put her away or be reconciled. Remember, Hosea had married Gomer. Goma was what? She was a profane woman. She was out there sleeping with other guys. What did God tell Hosea to do? Go get your wife back. <laughs> Go get your wife back. So God don't want you to be divorcing. We go into that direction of divorce because we don't want to be committed. So where was your heart committed? Did you get married because you wanted to get married? Because you see this person as your spouse that you want to be with for the rest of your life or you just want to use them for a means to an end. So if you guys got married because you want to do this for a means to an end, you didn't do it. God is not in that. That's, that's, that's fraudulent. 
So I hope that answers your question, brother. And, and that's a very good question because it'll help a lot of people think about it. You say, oh man, I just came in and did you answer that last question? And people do that. I just said that. You're going to have to watch that video. I said to the brother, yes, that is correct. That is not a marriage. If you got married because you want your green card, oh, I want to get married because I want to get, I want to get into the States. But you're not staying with that man. You just want to get into the States. Oh, you're a woman. I'm oh, sorry. So this is what the sister said. All right. You guys are marrying for the wrong thing. Are you marrying a man for money? Are you marrying a man because he looked good? Are you marrying a man because he, he got a certain job or prestige? It's false. You heard what I said? It's false. <laughs> you're in fornication. God honor vows. So if you're going to do it for any purpose, honor your vows. They're going to be, why do you think they say to better or for worse? Why do you think those people be saying, when they have you saying the vows, do you accept this guy or you accept this woman for better or for worse? Because all y'all doing is trying to accept them for the better, but when he's not doing so good, you're walking away. Sisters, you only got the guy because he got a good job, but when he loses his job, you're like, I can't deal with him no more. I got, I got, I can't, I, he's not providing for me. How about you pray for that man to get a better job? Or you pray for that man that God will provide for him to get a job so he could provide for you. Because it says the wife has no power over her body, but the husband. And likewise, the husband has no power over his body, but the wife, because the two has become what? One flesh. Some of you guys are in relationship and still thinking that you're separate from your wife or you're separate from your husband. Oh, I don't need to cover him. He got that. I cover my own stuff. Hey, hey, are you one flesh or are you two different people? Let's talk. So y'all don't even know. Go watch my previous videos. We already talked about this. Go through the archives. All you brothers and sisters that want to know about marriage, go through the archives. I've talked about this plenty of times. Let's get into Second Chronicles now. We have talked about this. So go watch that. Talked about this. You know, and uh, ask the Lord what you need to do with your wicked heart. If y'all not living right, because uh, y'all ain't living right. See, uh, let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 18, verses 18 to 22. Please put this in the chat room, moderators. Second Chronicles chapter 18, verses 18 to 22. All right, let's look. Chapter 18, Second Chronicles. All over the place, but you know, we're gonna find that we're gonna wrap this up. I want to get through all my notes, so 18 to 22. Please, thank you. All right, so it says 18 22. So it says, and again, he said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. This is a prophet speaking to um, Micaiah, who's speaking to Ahab. Remember, M Micaiah was the one who was not. He was not giving Ahab no good news. He say, he always speaking bad of me. All my other prophets speak good of me, but Micaiah don't speak good of me. He speak evil of me. So this is Micaiah's word to Ahab. He said, again, he said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. So what we understand is all of the hosts of heaven is the sons of God. That's angels, principalities, thrones, dominion, powers, uh, saints, all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab? Hold on a second. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, the king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spoke after, spoke saying after this manner and another saying after that manner. Then came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail Go out and do even so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit 
in the mouth of these prophets. Now I'm going to help you understand the left hand on another level. What we just read is very important because it explains how the book of Job was also playing. It's the same similar thing. It's a similar pattern. Remember that all the sons of God were called to present themselves before the Lord, the assembly, the congregation, and Satan accompanied with them? Well, the lion spirit is Satan because Satan is a liar. God is not a liar, but God allow this lying spirit to be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of Ahaz's prophet because now it's judgment. Judgment is coming to Ahab because he kept backsliding. And God did show Ahab mercy and grace, but he kept, he, he took the vineyard of, of Naboth. Remember Naboth? He killed Naboth. He had him, of Jezebel had to write a false letter say, oh, um, Naboth did this and that, and they killed Naboth and took his vineyard. God's like, okay, you want to do that? I right, I got you. Now I'm going to plan with my host, all the hosts of heaven. I'm going to ask them how you want to deal with this. I remove my hand of grace. See, when God removes his hand of grace, you're dealing with the left hand. And the left hand has to do with punishment, judgment, persecutions, all of that. So if you go back, it says, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the spirit. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right and on his left. So the spirit that was sent out to be a lying spirit would not be on his right side. It will be on his left side. Just like when God asks Satan, what do you think about my servant Job? A perfect man, upright, who feared God. Right? What did Satan say? If you do this and do that, just like this lying spirit, he's, look what he said. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spoke saying after this manner and another saying after that. So they just talking amongst each other like, yeah, man, you, sh you should do that, God. And yeah, man, I think you should, should do this over here, God. And look what he said. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord. Sound like Satan? All right. And said, I will entice him. Well, remember, remember James chapter one says, God is neither tempted with evil, nor does he tempt any man to do evil. So I'm showing you how the Bible connects. God is not doing the enticement. Look what it said. It said a spirit came out and stood before the Lord. Look what he said. I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. See, this has to do with false prophets. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail. So when God gives the go ahead, just like in Job, when Satan said, if, I, if you take away this from him, God, and you take away from that, God, he's going to curse you to your face. He said, all right. He's in your hands, but spirit is life. So God also gives restrictions to the enemy. He allows the enemy to test you because it's to test your faith. It's to test what you, it's to test if, if his faith is in your heart. You say you believe in Jesus. You say you for God. You say you represent God. Well, God's going to put you in the wilderness. He's going to remove his grace temporarily. He's going to allow the enemy to test you. To see if you're really about that life. God already knows the outcome. So we don't put our trust in what we can do for God. We put our trust in what God already did for us. See, that's the balance right there. We don't put our trust in what we can do for God. So this is why you fall in your faith. This is why you fail in your faith. Because you're trying to do something for God. Like you're impressing God. God is not impressed. The reason why he's allowing the enemy to test you because he's ready not impressed with you. He wants to see how you're going to squirm. <laughs> Hear what I'm saying? Look what he said. And he said, you shall prevail. Go out and do even so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. Who? Ahaz prophets. Because remember, Micaiah was always speaking negatively about Ahab. And what was Ahaz's problem? He didn't like Micaiah because he said Micaiah didn't speak good of him, right? He said, everybody else is telling me a good report, but Micaiah is telling me a bad report. And I don't like Micaiah because he always speaking things that make me feel offended. Now, let's apply this to the church. 
A lot of you guys only want to hear good things about yourself. When you go to a man of God and you ask a man of God to pray for me and you go, oh, what a husband and I want a wife. You, you see, you're willing to give your money to a man of God, a woman of God, so they can say nice things about you. But when a man of God, a woman of God correct you or give you correction like, nah, he's not a man of God no more. Oh, she's not a woman of God no more. Oh, um, yeah, I think I'm not going to go back to this church anymore. You church hurt. Right? But when, when you have a prophet or a prophetess or whatever pastor y'all go to, always talking good about you. You so beautiful, sister. Why are you so lonely? God said he's going to send you a man. Oh, really? Yeah, you just need to donate $100 to my ministry and he's going to send you next week a man of God. You just got pimped. And, and you just got pimped by a lying spirit because you are evil in your heart. Instead of you hearing the truth, some other pastor the other day came and told you, Hey, sister, stop dressing like that. How are you going to attract a man of God if you out here wearing booty shorts? How are you going to attract a man of God if you don't know how to submit to a man? How dare you? You're not my father. Who are you? I don't want to hear you. You're not no man of God. Then you go to a quote unquote man of God and he tell you everything you want to hear and you give a donation because he told you everything you want to hear but the man of God they didn't tell you what you wanted to hear. You scorned him. You said he like Micaiah. He don't ever tell me a good report. I don't like Neil. He don't ever tell me no good report. He always saying I'm a whore. He always saying I'm living in fornication. He always making me convicted in my heart. I can't listen to his lies no more. Unsubscribe. <laughs> okay. And that's when God going to send you those false teachers because you have itching ears and you don't want to hear the truth. Every time you hear correction, you reject correction. But how could you be a child of God if you can't receive correction? It says the father chasing those who he loved. Look at how when God bragged about Job, bragged about Jesus, or bragged about any one of his prophets. Look at how much torment they went through. Because you can't have the good without the bad, and you can't have the bad without the good. If you're getting good reports, you got to also receive the bad. That's the balance. Put a one in the chat if you understand the assignment now. You guys only want good reports, but no bad reports. And all you guys just want to hear bad reports, but don't want to balance it out with good reports. I see a lot of you TikTokers always talking about what the government is doing. Oh, they about to change the dollar. Oh, the Antichrist is on the come. Oh, man, you got to stop doing this. But what about grace? How about you put out a message that had nothing to do with fear-based things? How many times y'all going to put out videos talking about when the rapture going to happen? But when the rapture don't happen, there's rest my kid. Oh, they feeding us hamburgers that's a dollar. Remember that time? Remember last year? They talking about the dollar burgers. And if you guys eat these hamburgers, you're going to turn into zombies. I don't see nobody getting eaten yet. And if they are getting eaten, you probably enjoy all your Wendy's and McDonald's hamburgers. You don't ate somebody's finger. <laughs> Just enjoy it. You've been doing it. They ain't doing nothing new that you didn't never did before. <laughs> It's nothing new under the sun. So when you got all these people that's kind of, oh, God told me this. God showed me a vision. And you guys got to repent. It's going to be three days of darkness. And we're still here. You don't say that these are false teachers and wolves in sheep clothing. You'll say, it's okay, brother. It's okay to make a mistake. You don't call them out. But the guys who are calling out sin, you calling them out and saying they're false teachers and false prophets. If they ain't speaking about rapture and talking about when Jesus Christ coming back and constantly focusing, having you focus on a specific date when the Bible was very clear, it says no man, no angel don't know it, the hour or the time of the Father's return. But y'all always waiting for him he's returning. But are you getting ready? You waiting for God to return, but are you getting ready? He says, I present to me a church without spot and wrinkle. So if, if he comes back, is he coming back to a virgin bride or is he coming back to a harlot? 
Because the church is in harlotry, y'all in idolatry. Y'all talking about grace, 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 grace. But y'all celebrating Christmas, Easter holidays. It got nothing to do with Jesus. You celebrating the queen of heaven. Some of you guys worship Mother Mary like she is the queen of heaven. Mary is a, a child of God. Yes, she was used by God to bring God into this world, Jesus Christ. But if you worship her like she's God, the queen of heaven, no, you worshiping Ashtoreth, the queen of heaven. Wait till I do that video. I'm going to slam it on y'all. I'm going to hit y'all with the real stuff because I'm just getting scr I'm just scratching the surface. See, these two videos I just did, right hand of God, left hand of God is just opening up the door for more revelation. Y'all ain't not. Y'all always coming on here looking for a word. What's the new word, brother? How about you digest the word that I gave you last week? How about you apply the word that I gave you last week? Did you get a baptism? No, I didn't do that yet. Then why are you asking me to pray for you if you didn't follow the first instructions? Don't ask me to pray for you. Don't ask me to say you know prayers if you can't follow instructions. Rebellion is equal to witchcraft and stubbornness is equal to idolatry. Get them idols out of your heart. Get them idols out of your home. Get them idols out of your ears. Clean out your eardrums. And hear sound doctrine. See, sound doctrine is going to be offensive to people who don't like sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is going to be offensive to those who hate the truth and love unrighteousness. I'm not your cup of tea. I am not Lipton's. I'm bitter. Like herbs. And you're going to need that to clean out. Because, see, all the stuff that y'all resist, the herbs and the bitters, the um, the seven seas, if y'all Caribbeans, y'all drink your Corolla bitters. Yeah, you know it's bitter, but it cleans you out. Get all them, all them things out your body. Because y'all not living right. The body of Christ is living like the world. And we're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. Instead of you being a trend, instead of you setting the trend, you following trends. You watch all these TikTokers on here doing some trend. Remember the trend last year with the with the rapture doctrine? And you see you guys getting raptured up. That was a trend. And all y'all Christians were following that trend. Oh, we getting raptured. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Until you get your house in order first. What is the house? You the house. You are the body. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Which temples you are. What did Paul say? Keep unspotted from the world. What does it mean to keep unspotted from the world? Stop going back to your idolatry. Stop going back to your whoredom. Stop going back to your fornications. And be separate and set apart. That's what it means to be sanctified. So when Job said, I'm going through these tests and I'll be tried like gold. That's what God is doing in you. God is refining you like gold tried in the fire. So then you talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because the brother was asking me about the baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire. That's the refining fire. Refining your evil ways, your evil thoughts, your wicked behaviors, your whorish ways. Yeah, your rebellious ways. You're talking about you got a Jezebel spirit. You're not even biblically sound. There's no such thing as a Jezebel spirit. There's a such thing as an asterisk spirit. There's a such thing as a spirit of Baal. There's a such thing as a rebellious spirit and a spirit of whoredom. Yeah, that's that. That's that's biblical. Y'all use this Jezebel lingo and everybody in the church and outside the church now saying the church. Now people who say, oh, you got a Jezebel spirit. So does that make me a Christian now? I said, I said the word Jezebel. Does that make me a Christian now? <laughs> no. Repent. Be baptized. Every single one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then you become a Christian when you receive the Holy Ghost. You are not a Christian until you receive the Holy Ghost. If you say I'm a Christian because you go to church and you don't understand what's being said in the church. You don't even understand how to read your Bible or understand anything that's in the Bible. How are you a Christian? Answer me that. 
Put a one in the chat. If you understand your sign, let's wrap this up and close. Thank you, Father God. Oh, yeah. You want me to read this one more time? Hold a second. One more verse. He's like, you know, you won't get through all these verses right now. Proverbs 3, verse 16. Length of days is in her right hand, and on her left hand, riches and honor. What does that mean? Proverbs 3, verse 16. Length of days is in her right hand, and on her left hand, riches and honor. See, y'all always focus about the outward appearance. Y'all looking for the riches and honor. But the length of days, everlasting life is on the right hand. Who gives everlasting life? The right hand of God. Who's the right hand of God? Jesus Christ made flesh. So that answers your question. So if you don't have Christ living on the inside of you, you'll have no length of days. All y'all just want is, when I'm getting married, when I'm getting a new job, uh, when, I'm, when am I moving out? Yo, when are we going to get raptured up? Where is the righteousness? Where is the laws of God that's written in your hearts, people? Let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father God, for allowing me to go through all my notes because you know how I be ran. Thank you, Father God, for using me as the vessel to preach your word, to allow me to plant the seeds to the, for my brothers and sisters can receive this message in spirit and truth. I thank you, Father God, for those who will watch this video in the replay. And I thank you for all my brothers and sisters who are in attendance today in this chat room. We thank you, Father God, for covering us in the blood of Christ from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Thank you for covering our homes, covering our families, covering our jobs, covering our marriages. Father God, thank you, Father God, for leading us and guiding us through your Holy Spirit. And those who may not understand what was said in this video, we thank you, Father God, for revealing your right hand, revealing your revelations through your Holy Spirit to the people who may not understand your word at this time. Those who may be struggling with their faith, Father God, thank you for helping them in their walk with you. We decree and declare this now in Jesus' name, amen. And we also pray a hedge of protection over the messenger and the message and those who receive this message from any spiritual retaliation of the enemy because of the information that was given today in this video. We decree and declare it by faith in Jesus' name, amen. Put an amen in the chat room, brothers and sisters, if you have received the prayer and the assignment. My next video is going to be on some hard hitting stuff. All right? So just prep your mind for that. If you guys have not watched the right hand of God and you just, you're just watching this video today, it's not enough just to watch the left hand. You got to know what the right hand is doing. Right? So go to YouTube. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, go to Neil Aubrey Taylor's, the same as my TikTok. I recently uploaded that video, so it's there to you guys to watch. So watch that video, and I'm going to upload this video later on so you can have left hand and right hand so you can understand the wholeness and fullness of the God that you serve. If you guys are new to the platform, welcome to the platform. If you're a reoccurring subscriber, you already know how I give it up. Don't binge watch my videos. I want you to study, write notes. Take notes and go in your prayer class. So all the scriptures I'm leaving for you guys, I want y'all to go through the video. If you got to pause the video, Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. Ecclesiastes, I didn't even get to that one, but it's okay. Ecclesiastes 10, verses 2 to 3. Second Chronicles, verse 18, 18 to 22. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. Job chapter 23, verses 8 to 10. I know I'm going fast, so just slow that video down so y'all can get the notes. Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 to 29. Proverbs 3, verses 16. And Isaiah 45, verse 7. These are the notes that I want to leave with you guys. This is your homework. All right? So study that in your own time with God. And allow him to reveal to you whatever revelations he has for you in your personal life and for the body of Christ. I'm interested in hearing what you guys got to say about that. And um, go to the website, www.footworkministries.com. I got blogs I've written and books I've written that the Lord put on my spirit to write. They're all free to read and download. So go to the website www.footworkministries.com. If you can't find the website, go to the TikTok bio description when you go to my tiktok page you'll see the website right there and go check out the website if you guys need prayers you need to, if you guys are not christians i'm talking to non-christians in here 
If you're a Christian, this doesn't apply to you. If you're a Christian, I want you to hit me up for the prayer album. I'll send you the link to the prayer album. But if you're a non-Christian, do not ask for the prayer album until you get baptized. That's the, that's the, that's something new that God's been bringing to my attention. Because a lot of you guys want deliverances, but y'all not going through with the baptism. No, you cannot receive a deliverance if you're not going to 100% give your life to God. So what I want you to do is get a water baptism for those who I send this, send this prayer to. If you, if you need to get saved, give your life to God. So hit me up for the sinner's prayer and go set up a water baptism. So Sammy, if you're still in the chat room, I need you to hit me up for the sinner's prayer. And you need to set up that baptism with your dad since you said that there, he's a Pentecostal pastor. Set that up. Get him to do that water baptism. And I'll send you the prayer album after that. All right. So with that being said, you brothers and sisters, have a blessed day. I'll catch you guys in the next video. You said, what if I was told my calling? Let me say it again. You said, what if I was told my calling? Can you help with that? Can't help you with that. Only the Holy Spirit can help you with that. I'm not God. See, that's the mindset I want y'all guys to understand. I'm not God. If God gave you a calling, you need to trust in that calling in faith. No man could justify that. All I could do if that's really from God, if God's called you to do something, he would confirm it through one of his saints. So if something he, God told you that is coming from God, it will be confirmed through me or somebody else, whoever he chooses. And if he chooses not to confirm that through physical flesh, you still got to trust and believe that that's from God. That's my answer to you, sister. Put a one in the chat if you understand the assignment. So I am not here to confirm or not confirm. All I'm here to confirm is the word of God. If you say you got called by God, make sure that it lines up with the word. If it does not line up with who God is, his character, his word, it doesn't line up with scripture, then you know it's not from God. Ignore it. Disregard it. The most important thing that you need to know about your calling is that you call to repentance. Let's start with that first calling. You call to repent. Give your life to Christ. Go through the sanctification. Get off of TikToks. I'm listening to everybody and that's including me. Go in the wilderness and learn God's voice so that you don't have to ask me what's your calling. You will know your calling and follow that. See, because if we all sit here watching TikTok people and we trusting in their opinion, are we trusting in God? So that's my advice from you, from the Holy Spirit. Trust in God. Don't trust in man. I will fail you. If you trust in, in me to give you an answer, I'm going to disappoint you. So I'm going to disappoint you now so you don't feel worried about this. I'm going to disappoint you. I'm not your pastor. I'm your brother in Christ. And I don't have that answer because he never revealed that to me. He revealed that to you. So if he revealed that to you, you need to trust and act on that calling. Don't need me to justify you. You need him to justify you. And with that being said, you brothers and sisters, have a lovely day. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.